So don't ask me how, but I ended up getting myself the brand new M2 MacBook Air. Now, I don't really know why I got this because I've got the 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro, but when I saw this available on Amazon, even though it was sold out everywhere, I just couldn't help myself but just to buy it. So today I'm going to give you my initial first impressions and review of the M2 MacBook Air, and then I'm also going to set it up as a brand new MacBook, setting up my programming and dev environment and all the apps that I use to customize this new MacBook Air. We're gonna install some CLIs, we're gonna just customize it, we're gonna install the applications that I use. So yeah, it's a fresh new MacBook Air. I haven't used it at all. If you haven't seen the unboxing video, I'll pop it up on the screen right now for 10 seconds, and then we'll go into the actual video. Also, I just want to say a big thank you for 30,000 subscribers. I appreciate all of you guys watching, liking, and subscribing. And yeah, keep supporting because I think this channel is really going to take off this year. So straight off the bat, the MacBook Airs are always going to be really light, but this is so light. So it's only 1.24 kilograms in weight. We also have the USB-C ports on the side, and we also have a MagSafe charger port. And on the other side, we've got the headphone jack as well. Literally, I've not used it. As you can see, it's the starlight color. I don't know if the camera picks up the starlight color properly. But yeah, this is the Starlight version. I couldn't get the famous Midnight Blue because it is sold out everywhere. This actual laptop is completely sold out in the UK, but I was just randomly minding my own business on Amazon a couple of nights ago, just before bed. And I thought, you know what? Let me just check if Amazon have the M2 MacBook Air completely unplanned. And when I went onto the MacBook Air listing, I saw it was available for next day. So what I did, impulsively, I bought it. So this is a quick size comparison between the M2 MacBook Air and the 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro. As you can see, it's a huge difference in size and that's expected. This is a 16 inch, this is a 13 inch, but yeah, you can see side by side, it looks a lot smaller because it is. Puts into perspective the difference in size, which again is very expected. And in terms of thickness, you can see the M2 Air is a lot thinner than a 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro. And then you can see we've got the ports on the side as well. But yeah, as we can see, it's super thin, super lightweight, and I actually really like the Starlight color. I also have my iPad mini in Starlight as well, so it kind of matches with that. And as we know, this MacBook Air does have the new M2 chips, which is the new range of chips for Apple MacBooks. We will dive in deep to the M2 Air chip and compare it with my 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro. But yeah, if you want to see that comparison video between the M1 Pro chip and the M2 Air chip, then make sure you subscribe to the channel because you don't want to miss it. Now we are going to do a deep dive review of the M2 MacBook Air. We're going to put it through its paces. We're going to review it from a programming perspective and a software engineer's perspective. Can this handle high intensive applications like video editing as well? 4K video, 8K video, we're gonna put it through its paces. But for now, we're going to switch screens and I'm gonna show you guys how I set up a brand new MacBook Pro for programming and engineering. So as you can see, we are on the new MacBook screen right now. And what I do always at the start of every MacBook setup is I remove all of these annoying apps that I don't use. So I clear up and clean up the dock. So let's do that. So options, remove from dock. What else do we not need? Numbers, we'll remove that and I'll quickly remove all of these apps. I feel like the use of this laptop will be more on the go, whereas my M1 MacBook Pro 16 inch, I use that as my daily workhorse. Now, this is really going to be the laptop that I use when I'm out and about, because it's just so light and easy to carry, and also the screen is a decent size. The 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro is a little bit heavy and a bit more difficult to carry around, and then open it up in cafes and work from there makes it quite challenging because you need a fairly decent table size. Don't like Safari, but we'll keep it there. App Store, that can go too. And I think that looks pretty solid for now. And then obviously when we install our applications, we'll add those into our dock. Secondly, I like to position my dock on the right side of my screen because then we've got more screen real estate and we also will hide the dock so it doesn't show up and unless we actually go and try and use it. So I think we go to dock preferences, automatically hide and show dock. Let's just make it a little bit bigger as well, just so you can see it. So what we can do now is if we scroll to the right of the screen, our dock will pop out and then if we move, it disappears. So yeah, that is the dock and then we can change size if we do this as well. Cool, second thing I always do is I install my browser of choice, which is of 
course, Google Chrome. Now, I've been using Google Chrome for so many years, especially because I used to do web engineering. Google Chrome just makes it so much easier to debug applications in the browser. So that's what we're going to install, Google Chrome. Whilst we're doing that, we'll also install VS Code alongside of it, just for efficiency and productivity. Otherwise, this video might be about three hours long. Just straight off the bat, the MacBook Air, it just has a nice experience using this because it's so thin and lightweight. Before I forget, this is actually the base model. So it's gonna put into perspective for you guys, if you can actually use the base model M2 MacBook Air video editing for programming and really high intensive applications. I always, always buy the base model MacBooks because I feel like they are powerful enough. But yeah, let's see. So that's been installed. Let's open up Google Chrome. So with the S code, I always like to install a few plugins. The first plugin I always install is Prettier. Prettier basically is an extension that formats our code. And then I also install ESLint as well. That's for JavaScript linting. We can also install other things, right? Like Docker, for example. You can also in install the Terraform extension. And that's why I love VS Code, just because of how flexible it is and how many different extensions that you can actually install and customize your dev environment. Cool, so that's our browser and our IDE. So the next thing we want to install is Homebrew. Now, Homebrew is basically like a package manager and allows us to install lots of different packages for our MacBook machine specifically things like Node and NPM. Let's go ahead and install Homebrew for Mac. The thing is, I don't know if Homebrew is actually compatible with the M2 chip. There might be a few things that we installed that aren't yet compatible with the M2 chip, but we'll try it anyway. Open Terminal, get that installed. Oh, this might take a little while because it's going to install the CLI for Xcode. So yeah, we just need to wait because obviously we need to install Xcode. So then we've got Git in our terminal. So that's going to take a while because Xcode is such a big file. 125 hours, apparently. Well, I hope not because this video is gonna be very, very long if that's the case. But yeah, I'll come back when this Xcode has been installed. The software has been installed. So that means we should now actually have Git installed. Git version, there you can see we've got it. Before we didn't, now we do. Lovely stuff. So once that's done, then we can install NPM and Node. The typing experience of this M2 MacBook Air is actually really nice. Seems to be a lot nicer to type on than my M1 16 inch MacBook Pro. But at least Node is being installed, which is lovely. There's only two more things that I use. I use the AWS CLI for any cloud engineering work, as well as installing Terraform, which is my infrastructure as code tool. So install Terraform CLI Mac. So we need to do that. I mean, so AWS CLI install Mac and then install Terraform. There you go, Terraform's installed as well. Finally, we need to install the AWS CLI. So let's do that too. And then basically our dev environment is pretty much ready to go. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I've missed. Let's copy these commands. Requires Rosetta 2 to be installed. What I like about these errors, most of the time, well, not most of the time, occasionally they tell you what the error is and how you can fix it. For example, in this case, Type A or press return to agree. We now rerun it. Okay, so the AWS CLI for some bizarre reason doesn't want to be installed. I prefer using the terminal, but sometimes maybe we just need to do the installation via the GUI. Now I remember last time I did the setup on my M1 MacBook Pro, I did have issues with the AWS CLI. So let's see if I have the same problems now. But yeah, other than that, let's get this installed. Actually, that reminds me, I need to install Docker. Docker install Mac. So apparently CLI has been installed. Let's just double check. Run your download file on screen instructions. To verify it's been installed, run the AWS command in your path. AWS CLI, and it looks like AWS CLI has also been installed, which is awesome. It seems to be loading something. You can see if I type in AWS S3 help, it should give me some commands to do with S3. Remove, copy, LS, cool. But obviously I haven't set up my AWS account, so that wouldn't work. Cool, that's that. And finally, install Docker. If there's any other apps or software or tools or extensions that you guys use that I don't have and that would improve my productivity or my coding workflow, then make sure you comment them down below in the comment section of this video. Now that I'm using this and kind of setting it up for my Mac development, it's really getting me excited to start actually building things and using this as a actual programming device because I normally use obviously my M1 MacBook Pro 16 inch, 
But having something slightly smaller, slightly more portable, slightly lighter, I don't know, it gives it like a different kind of vibe. I don't know if that's just me. Obviously the M1 16 inch is a lot more powerful. It's got a bigger screen. So that's probably going to be a lot better and most of the time to use for any engineering work. But it's sometimes good to have something smaller to see how this copes with high intensive engineering. Well, I say high intensive, it's more like cloud and web engineering. <laughs> So let's make sure Docker is installed. Copying it to applications. All these installation support help, accept, Bosch. Right, Docker also installed. But yeah, let me know in the comments what future videos you wanna see with this M2 MacBook Air. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon for another video. Peace.